Hi, this is doc Dr. Rob Rosberg from Hospital for Special Surgery. We're going to talk about excessive femoral antiversion repair uh, with minimal incision osteotomy surgery. This is Leah's story. She is a 15 year old girl. With excessive femoral antiversion, there is intoing because the knees are twisted internally relative to the hip. Patients can often uh, get their uh, hips into this um, awkward position representing the malalignment. As you can see from this uh, schematic, the knees are internally rotated relative to the hip and oftentimes um, the problem comes from the compensation of trying to twist the knees externally and that creates a lot of stress in the hips. If you look at the femur bone like a telescope, you'll see that the femur has a knee part and it has a hip part. And the normal orientation is that the hip is about 15 degrees antiverted or upwardly tilted uh, relative to the knee. In patients who have excessive femoral antiversion, this angle is much higher. And you can see here it's represented as 40 degrees. Um, if you try to walk with your foot forward, as this picture is showing, the hip is pushed into a very abnormal position. It creates a lot of stress uh, in the hip joint. Most of the time, patients will walk more comfortably uh, with the hip oriented like this and, the, uh, and the, the foot turned internally. CT scan. Uh, does axial slices through the hip and through the knee and it allows a measurement of the orientation of the knee relative to the hip and in this example you can see it's 50 degrees of antiversion which is excessive. How do we fix this? By doing a minimal incision rotational osteotomy we can untwist the knee relative to the hip. In these x-rays, you can see a rod is placed inside the marrow cavity of the bone. Bones are hollow like a pipe, and so a rod can fit inside. The, uh, the red arrow shows the osteotomy or the bone cut, and the knee is twisted externally around the intramedullary rod and then fixated with screws. In Leah's example, you can see preoperatively she walks with um, a lot of intoing. Um, it's awkward, it's energy inefficient, her uh, feet are bumping into each other, um, it is emotionally tolling for her, um, and that's sort of her natural gait as she's getting a bit tired. When she tries to compensate and really push her feet forward, um, you can see it puts a lot of stress on her hips. There's a lot of movement in the hips. It's very energy inefficient gait, creates hip pain, knee pain, and overall the situation leads to uh, tripping and, uh, and a feeling of being self-conscious in the way that one walks. After femur derotation surgery, uh, Leah is seen here walking very nicely, much smoother, um, and without pain. So how do we do this? This is um, a standing x-ray of Leah before surgery. The plan is to do osteotomy, which is bone cut represented by these red lines. We rotate the knee external relative to the hip, so we untwist the femur bone. I plan this um, by uh, figuring out what kind of an intramedullary rod I'm going to place and where I'm going to cut the bone and the size screws that I'm going to use to stabilize things. In surgery, the rod is inserted through a small incision. I make a window into the proximal part of the femur, top part of the femur. The rod is inserted up to the osteotomy level, which is done also through a very small incision. And then after the osteotomy is complete, the rod is advanced across the osteotomy it is stabilized with screws that hold the new rotational position. Same thing is done on the opposite side and bone healing progresses very nicely over the next several weeks. 
When all is said and done, uh, about a year later, I take out the rods, as you can see in this long x-ray, and Leah has done really well. She is um, back to cheering. Uh, she's very active. Uh, everything was done through uh, minimal incision technique with small scars. She walks well. She has no tripping at this time. And the biomechanics of her back, her hip, her knee, and her ankle have been normalized. And this is going to have a very positive effect on her joints during the course of her lifetime. And of course, the way she walks now uh, is much better. And so she has improved body image, improved confidence that has come along with that. Again, to review, this was the preoperative um, walk with a lot of in towing, very energy inefficient gait awkward gait and this is the gait postoperatively very smooth um, feet are pointing forward nicely